In today's episode, we're going to be talking about what protective gear I wear when I go out mountain biking. Yo, I hope you're all doing very well. So like I said, we're going to be going into what protective gear I wear when I go mountain biking. So I'm going to start from the head and work my way down the body to see what protective gear I wear and in what scenario. So helmets are very important because it's protecting your brain and that's a big component. You know, that's the main nervous system for your whole body. This is my main trail helmet. It's when I wanna go with something lightweight. It's got great breathability. It's also got MIPS for rotational um, force. So if I fall off, it means the MIPS will rotate my head slightly so it's not taking the full impact. And all my helmets have MIPS in them. So that's something to be wary of when you're buying a helmet. What kind of protective layers does it have? Yeah, so this is pretty more of my tame trail riding where I know the trail pretty well. I know I'm not gonna be doing anything extreme and that's when I'll tend to wear this. The second helmet has a bit more protection. You know, it covers around the ears and quite a lot of the back of the head. You still got an open face, but a bigger visor. Uh, I tend to wear this at jump parks. Uh, and also if I know I'm gonna be riding something a bit harder and I can't be bothered to wear a full face. This has become quite a popular helmet. It looks pretty cool on as well. And I also wear it a lot when I go BMXing. Just realized my light died out. So this is my full face helmet. Me and full face helmets haven't really got seen eye to eye at the beginning. I was kind of, I wouldn't say, I was self-conscious to wear one, to say the least. Uh, you know, I thought people would think he's a wuss for wearing a full face helmet, but you know, that was something that was in my mind. It might not be in everyone's minds, but you know, most mountain bikers and riders don't care that you're wearing a full face helmet. You know, they just care that you're out there enjoying yourself. And you know, this has helped me enjoy myself so much more because I've got that added layer of protection. One of the biggest things with myself is I'm scared of knocking my teeth out because here in the UK, our healthcare is free. So NHS does an amazing job and they look after you very well, but your dental care isn't and it can get very expensive. So if I can save money there and buy a full face helmet, then that is what I'm going to do. Some mentions I like to add, this one hasn't got much breathability. So when I'm wearing it at bike parks, and now I've also started wearing it at jump parks, I get very hot and sweaty in here and have to take it off very often. Um, the buckle is kind of taken from motorcycle and motorsport helmets. It's very secure, but it's very hard to get on and off very quickly, especially if you're sweating loads and you wanna take this on and off. So something I'd be wary of is looking for a quick release mechanism. So either like the magnetic locks or just the normal buckle and also looking for something with breathability. So a lot of mountain bike helmets now have like air vents, but for me, I got this one because it was on sale. So it was a really good price. So another piece of protective gear for the face is eyewear. Um, I tend to wear sunglasses a lot when I ride. These are bike specific ones. So it's from Melon Optics and they make mountain bike specific sunglasses. The good thing with this is you can quickly change out the lens. So at the moment it's got a polarized tinted lens. You can also swap it out for a clear lens. So if it's on a dull day, your eyes are still protected from the elements. So if that could be anything from rain, uh, mud coming off of the trails, um, flies, cause you know, you're in the woods and nature. So there's gonna be lots of flies around. In extreme occasions, you can also wear goggles. So there are mountain bike specific goggles you know, like snowboarders wear, those are good because you get all round protection from the elements. Moving down the body, I've recently got this base frame chest and back protector, also shoulder protector from Fox. It's using a D3O material, which is a plastic malleable material, but on impact it hardens and protects you from any sting and takes the pressure out of it. So much can go wrong in mountain biking and if I can protect my back from hitting against a rock or trees, then I'm gonna do that. Same with my front chest, you know, I don't want this area. Obviously, you've still got the floating ribs, um, but you know, you can't protect everything. But yeah, also it's good for the shoulders. I have had shoulder issues before due to jujitsu, so that's something that I wanna protect. I'm gonna do a full review of this because I haven't actually ridden it on the trails. Next up is elbow pads. I don't tend to wear these as much, only really at bike parks um, or if I remember to put them on. Um, these ones are quite flexible. You know, it's just to protect 
the joint, you know, if you fall over on there, it's quite exposed. There's not much fatty protection around there. So, you know, when you do go down, it's gonna graze and it's gonna hurt a lot. So that's to take the sting out of it and also to stop any grazing. Also, you can get a base plate with arm pads built in, but you know, I like to ride them separate because it's probably not all occasions I'm gonna wear a chest pad or sometimes I just don't really need elbow pads and I can wear the chest pad underneath my t-shirt, which is quite nice. Um, yeah, that's it for the elbow pads. These are from Leet and you know, they go on pretty well. They just roll up your arm and very flexible. You don't really notice them there. And the next thing is your hands. I know a lot of people don't class gloves as protection, but they are great that if you do come off and you put your palms out, they're not gonna get grazed and scratched. You can get ones with padding on your knuckles and everywhere to protect the little bones there. Um, I haven't got anything like that. These are just nice. Uh, the good thing with gloves is in the summer when you're riding, and I have experienced this, I get very sweaty and it means it makes the grips very slippery. So this combats that and stops any sweat getting on your grips. And it means you've got decent grip and handling when you're going down the trails. Another note with the hand area, I have seen people wearing wrist guards. I don't know if that's a big thing with mountain biking. I know it's in skateboarding, a lot of people do. Um, they're pretty handy if you fall off. I don't know how comfortable it would be to grip. Um, maybe it's worth looking into because, you know, you don't want to lose that mobility in your hands. I know I've got some wrist problems, uh, again, from jiu-jitsu. I seem to get injured a lot in jiu-jitsu, you know. That's why I wear full face, because I broke my face. <laughs> you know, I, I took a knee to the cheekbone, fractured it, and now I've got permanent nerve damage there. And, you know, now I've got some really bad wrist problems. So when I'm riding down the trails, it tends to really be painful by the end of my session. So maybe I should look into that and do some rehab training, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see what kind of wrist protection you can get for mountain biking. So if you do know of anything, let me know in the comments below. Okay, now moving down to the crotch area, um, you can wear something like this. This is what I mainly use for my road cycling or gravel cycling, it's called bib shorts. Uh, it's got a padded area to protect your gooch. So when you're cycling for long hours in the saddle, it means that it's pretty comfortable, you know, you're not sitting direct on the saddle, you're sitting with a padded foam insert in between. Generally when I'm mountain biking, I don't tend to wear this. Uh, I'd only wear this if I'm, say, on a ride that's over 20 miles. Generally in mountain biking, I prefer to go downhill, so you, a lot of the time I'm standing up and never in the saddle. Uh, it's only on the climbs or on straights. You can get shorts which are padded in the thigh area and around the butt. So if you do come off and you hit the ground, you know, you're protected there. So it's not gonna be a big deal. And you're not gonna get massive bruising. I'm moving down to your knees. I've got two types of knee pads here. So these are some very thin, flimsy ones that I bought pretty cheap to go underneath my trousers. Um, I got them from my skateboarding days and kind of carried them over into my mountain bike ones and they're not very comfortable to pedal in, you know, they kind of slip all over the place. The padding's quite stiff, so it doesn't mold around your knee properly and can be very uncomfortable to pedal, especially on the long trail sessions. And that's maybe something I'm gonna look at upgrading. I have looked at some Fox ones, which do look ergonomically great for pedaling in and they wrap around your knee. These ones are just rubbish, you know, they're pretty cheap. So that's why I'd say invest wisely when it comes to protective gears, you know, get something that lasts, you know, and will be with you for a long time. Um, moving on to burlier knee pads. These are the ones I wear when I go to bike parks or jump parks. Um, as you can see, it's got a bigger protection on the knee. So, you know, when you're going down fast trails or hitting high jumps, if you come off, it's gonna protect your knee. Also, it's kind of shaped around the knee, which is pretty nice. Uh, these ones are from Leet, and they've also got a shin protector. Look at these things on your mountain bike. They are pedals and they've got big burly metal pins to grip your feet to it. And when it comes to mountain biking, if you slip a pedal and that goes into your shin, they're gonna be bleeding like hell. I know a lot of BMXers, they ride with shin pads and people doing lots of tricks because you're jumping off the pedals and on and off the pedals. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of that, then it's worth investing in shin protectors because it is horrible taking a shinner. These aren't the best for pedaling in, so they're not, 
you know, as comfortable as say just a normal knee pad because they aren't, they're quite stiff there. And yeah, you know, you get used to them when they're on, but when you put them on initially, it's pretty strange and you feel very restrictive. But the great thing with these is you can hide them under your riding trousers so it doesn't look like you're wearing anything underneath. So moving down from the knees and the shins, the next thing would be your ankles. I haven't really got ankle support. I know I've seen a lot of professional BMXers who are doing lots of tricks and slope style riders wear them because they've got padding on the ankles. Especially if you're doing tail whips and you're kicking the bike around, the pedals could strike into your ankle and that's gonna be pretty painful. So I can see why it is needed. Also to kind of reduce the movement. So if you roll an ankle or anything like that, that will help with that. And moving on to the ankles, to the shoes. I know people don't really class these as protection, but they are in a way because, you know, you can get ones with great ankle support as well to stop you from rolling them, but also making sure you've got good grip on the pedals because last thing you want to do is be slipping all over the place and falling off, getting a shinner. Uh, you know, so if you've got good gripping pedals, that's almost like a protective way. Uh, also, another thing is having good protection around the toe area. So making sure it's got a lot of good rubber protective there. So if I do hit a rock, I'm not gonna get any pain in my little toe. These ones are very breathable as well, so it's great in the summer times. And you can get waterproof ones, but I'd probably personally wear waterproof socks because then these drain really quickly and dry out really quickly compared to waterproof shoes. So yeah, that's a list of all the protective gear I wear when I go mountain biking. I do look ridiculous right now, but you know, I don't care because I know I'm gonna stay safe on the trails and you're not, so no, 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 you're gonna end up in A&E, whereas I'm gonna be fully protected. That's not the case, you know, you can still get injured wearing protective gear. But yeah, this is what I wear. So let me know in the comments below, you know, what kind of protective gear you wear. Has this bit inspired you to look at some other bits of kit, especially like this chest plate? I'm really excited to try this out on the bike parks and see how this also feels underneath and I don't really want to test the safety of it, but I know, you know, I might just take a hammer to it so I don't have to come off my bike because I don't want to break that and also I don't want to break myself. But yeah, that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channels. It helps a lot and I appreciate it so, so much. Hope you're all staying safe, staying positive, having fun, and I shall see you in the next one.